Доброго дня, шановні колеги. До вашої уваги інформація. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Now the information about the events that happened in the ATO area during the last 24 hours. First, I would like to say that the intensity of um, firing increased and uh, the militants use uh, heavy weapons more often. And uh, yesterday, one third of all uh, violations of ceasefire uh, was with the use of uh, the weapons that is banned by Minsk agreements. And uh, pre in previous days, it was one fourth of uh, all the shellings in the area. Also, for the first time this week, the enemy used rocket artillery against the Ukrainian armed forces. Now, the information in more detail about uh, yesterday's military actions. L Lugansk area, the main flash spot of this area is the Krimsk village of Novaydarsk region. Starting 2 a.m. till uh, sunrise, the militants delivered two mortar uh, and artillery shelling, each uh, of which lasted about two hours. Uh, the enemy used barrel artillery and also rocket artillery grads, uh, 120 uh, rocket shells, 70 shells of uh, um, cannons, 152 millimeter of caliber, and 120 mines were launched by the militants. These are supplies that were brought to um, uh, the area from Russia and were launched in Krimsky by the militants. And the, the uh, also, Ria area suffered. This was Smolina village. Uh, Twenty shells were launched there by the militants, and also fifteen shells by the militants were launched. And um, uh, also, the uh, militants hold this uh, rocket, uh, mul multiple launch rocket systems uh, in the uh, front line area, and uh, they hold this weapon near. Saint Tianivka, Fuma, Frunze. And uh, the, in Papasnyansky region, the enemy violated ceasefire sporadically. Each shelling lasted about uh, 20 uh, minutes, and, uh, and uh, the epicenter was uh, first Troitsk, and then it was uh, shifted to Nova Alexandrovka. The enemy used small arms and uh, sniper uh, rifles included. And in Stanislavgansk, the enemy opened fire after sunset uh, with the use of grenade launches and small arms on the whole during the last 24 hours in the Lugansk area, the enemy delivered 16 shellings, uh, one fourth of which with the use of heavy weapons. The Donetsk area in Svetlodarsk Balch, the militants were active right from the morning till the midnight, and they shelled the ATO positions with some breaks of, uh, f and with the use of APCs, weaponry, and sm small arms. So sporadically, illegal armed groups used mortars in Gorlovka perimeter the enemy didn't use heavy weapons. Each of the episodes of uh, ceasefire violations lasted for 30 minutes to up to an hour. And the majority of shelling in this part of front line were in Zaitseva. The in, um, enemy shellings became more intense in Avdiivka and its suburbs. The militants are active in the production areas that in 10 in the morning after multi-hour shelling, uh, the use of tanks and mortars, uh, military actions near Divka stopped uh, before midnight. And in uh, Nevelsk, near Donetsk airport, uh, the enemy delivered short uh, mortar shelling. In the vicinity to the airport, uh, right after sunset, the enemy opened fire with the use of small arms in the direction of our forces. And during the last 24 hours in the Donetsk area, there were 35 enemy shelling, including 13 with the use of heavy weapons. The Mariupol area in Mariinsky region, the situation is tense here after midnight. The militants uh, uh, fired with the use of tanks and mortars, and in the day it was calm, but then in the evening they restarted their military activity. They delivered four shellings uh, during uh, three of these shellings. They used mortars 
each instance of ceasefire violations lasted no less than one hour. In Volnovsky region, there were three shellings after 4 p.m. in Novotroitska. The militants opened fire with the use of sniper rifles. In Novogrigorievka, they used the um, armory of uh, APCs. In Mikolaevka, that is between Novotroitska and Bogdanivka, the enemy delivered short-term mortar shelling. In the south of the oblast, the situation is tense. The enemy continues uh, its aggressive actions in Pavlo Pilsherokina part of front line and regularly uses heavy weapons and armored vehicles. And the biggest activity, uh, more activity is in Vodyane and Gnutava. <coughs> and also the enemy delivered uh, one artillery shelling in each of the settlements. And in the Mariupol area, uh, there is lion's share of all ceasefire violations by the enemy in the ADO area. And during the last 24 hours, the enemy delivered uh, 56 shelling, one, uh, 21 of which with the use of heavy weapons. During the last 24 hours, in the result of the military actions, two Ukrainian servicemen were killed and 16 were wounded. Our hearts go out to the relatives of the servicemen who were killed. An information about military intelligence. It was identified that during the shelling of ATO forces in the Mariupol area, a crew of uh, Howard's self-propelled artillery division of so-called 9th detached to assault motorized and rifle regiment of Marines that is deployed in Novozovsk from so-called DPR hit uh, their own checkpoint in the region of Pekuze village, former Kamenternova, and ruined a private house. Also, the specialists of the uh, uh, Chief Intelligence Department of MOD informed that uh, these days near Jalabok village, Papasnensky region, uh, the militants tried to cross minefield for subversive groups, and uh, four militants uh, died from so-called uh, force detached motorized and rifle brigade deployed in Olchevsk and uh, uh, three were wounded. The militants of uh, uh, Russian occupied forces continue their abuse in the uh, east of Ukraine. Uh, in Zimagiria village uh, th uh, town, three militants of uh, so-called force detached the motorized and rifle brigade heavily wounded an elderly man uh, who they believed uh, didn't show them enough respect. Uh, law enforcers continue to seize the weapons in the ATO area these days in abandoned house in the region of Vodyane village of Yenisovnovatsky region of Donetschina SBU found an arsenal of uh, more than 1,000 cartridges of uh, 30 millimeter of caliber and in Krasnogorev, near Krasnogorevka the offices found in water reservoir um, uh, package uh, containing a grenade with the fuse and the grenade launcher shell and w and the uh, flight stabilizer. And the uh, checkpoint in Bakhmut police officers found uh, uh, among the belongings of the passengers of the taxis two uh, grenades of one. And also in Taretsk uh, the officers found RGD grenade with the fuse and in Zaitsev a police officer found an exploded uh, ordinance and uh, uh, they called the uh, SAPER and uh, the saper seized this shell that was near uh, the residential buildings about 300 meters away. And uh, the law enforcement detained the former militant of DPR. The, in 2014, this resident of Bakhmut joined the militants and he uh, helped to create DPR and uh, he took part in the organization of a legal uh, referendum. Also, he collected information about uh, the uh, people and also was involved in propaganda. And uh, one of his tasks were to establish broadcast of Russian TV channels in the town. And then um, in s uh, several months, this man lost his interest in this destructive activity and tried to hide in controlled territories. And um, uh, he failed, and now he uh, is providing evidence to law enforcers. One more former militant was detained by the Dan uh, Donetsk uh, police officers. 33-year-old resident of the Richna Limansk region joined the militants uh, to earn some money. In spring 2014, he took part 
he saw the checkpoints near, near Yampal, and he checked transport and documents, and in July the militants fled the region and the men didn't get any money, and he tried to avoid responsibility, but he failed to escape. At the same time, the court released uh, one more uh, participant of SBU program that is called They Wait For You Back Home from Criminal Responsibility. This resident of Lysychansk in 2014 joined the LPR militants and then uh, during the month he checked the documents and vehicles at the checkpoint of the enemy. Then uh, he left the militants and was hiding for a long time in temporarily occupied territories. Then the man decided to use SBU program because he didn't commit any heavy crimes. And uh, he succeeded. He didn't commit any cri ha heavy crimes. That's why he was released from responsibility. Law enforcement co uh, continued to record the, the damage to the buildings in Marinka Krasnogorivka that were hit by enemy fire on the 9th of March. And 10 um, residential houses were damaged, uh, roofs were uh, broken, and the walls were ruined, and uh, the windows also were damaged. Do you have questions? please ask. If there are no, thank you and goodbye.